Howdy y'all, it's your old pal Bubba J talking at you, and today I've got a different sort of announcement. You see, we bought a cheap jump ship from some guy named Bargain Bill, and, well, it was, uh, it was haunted. Now, uh, Bargain Bill tried to sell me optional ghost insurance, and, well, he could call me old-fashioned for this one, but I just wasn't having it. So I went and called up Ghost X Incorporated and I ordered a whole mess of modified shotguns that fire a special type of ammunition. Now with our modified shotguns in hand, we loaded up the shells with rock salt and finely crushed up tacos. Never again will you have to worry about that poltergeist in cargo or that dang dull demon in the bathroom. Why the bathroom? I don't know. We even kept seeing the same clown pop up all over the place. I didn't even know there were clown ghosts. But with our uh, Ghost X brand ghost repellent shotguns loaded up with our special made anti-ghost taco shells, well, let's just say that we weren't worried a bit. And this is where you, the customer, come in. I tried to order eight of these Ghost X brand anti-ghost weapons and I met us up and, uh, well, I ordered eight crates of them, what I did. So now, here at Bubba J's Mechoplex, I'm passing the savings on to you. Plus, I gotta get rid of them in a hurry. You can come on down and pick one up at half price, and we'll hand you your first box of spicy salted ghost repellent taco power powder shells for free. And yes, we need a better name for that. Disclaimer, the Ghost X heavily modified shotgun does not shoot actual shotgun shells, only canisters of rock salt and tiger's eye, and that one time I stuffed a bunch of Vienna sausage into it, made a big mess, and then I got fussed at. Do not operate while drinking alcohol. Do not use indoors, outdoors, in a spaceship, or on a boat. We are not affiliated with Ghost X Inc. I just bought a whole mess of these things on accident, and here we are. Hello everybody, this is Hal Zakar of the Black Pants Legion. Thank you for choosing WBPL 76 for your entertainment. There were a lot of choices you could have made and you made this one. Thank you for being here with me. We are going to be getting into Shadows Over Loathing, but first I'm going to look over to chat and say hi to some people. I'm going to say hi to Night Owl and Grimos and Night Clerk and Tired German, and Falkenstein, and Wilf, and Mercury Alpha. Hey guys, I'm glad you're here. Thank you for being here. I did not say, Falkenstein, you made a poor choice. I just said you made a choice. <laughs> so thank you for being here, guys. We appreciate it. And we are going to get into Shadows Over Loathing. Oh, Night Owl has been awoken. Night Owl has a reason for the Lovecraftian stick figuring thing. Yeah, close enough. Hello, buddy. Thank you for being here. We're back at it. ka -chow. Oh, okay. Yes, now I remember. Here we are, um, hanging out in the fraternity because we just brought back the, uh, that was my alert, don't worry about it. Yes, we just brought back some, um, oh, 
There's there's Hell's Kit. Yep, yep, there's Hell's Kit. Uh, Alright, we just brought back the uh, mesquite chips that he wanted for his grilling. So we'll go. Boink, boink. Brett guy doing a little queuing indoors. It smells great, and thanks to those mesquite chips, you got him. And nobody seems to have fixated yet. So, yes, redeeming. Night Owl is redeeming pets. I am petting Halzakit. Halzakit, whose title is Vermin Slayer, first of her name, is working on reasserting her title. Because there is a vermin for her to get. But she has not gotten it yet. SIT kids in two different feet. There's a necktie hanging on the knob of the store, and you refuse to find out what that means. Let's see. Door is stuck shut with dried pudding. I hope it's pudding. I didn't know that's what it could be. Um, we went in here. Yes, this was the basement, and this was Oleo. Um, the tools are gravy stained but functional. Oh yes, this was making combat items. I wasn't going to do that right now. Boing, boing, boing. Alright. Now, I have to... Wait. Gotta talk to her. Glordo is hucking food at the dummy and his aim has the ball. How's it going, Glordo? Another day, another flashback to the atrocities of war. Did you bring my treat yet? Not yet, buddy. Let me check my to-do list, because I, I need specifications. Side quest. Okay, we gotta get in the laundry facility. And Floyd at Fish and Chips wants barbecue sauce. And Glordo wants five cotton candies. Alright. What's upstairs? I don't remember. Diggington is actually a graduate. So, um, he is an alumnus. Oh, I already went in there. Alright, let's see. Let's look at the map. Oh, right, right, right. So there was something over here. Yes, we needed barbecue sauce. You decide to take a shortcut between some campus buildings and come face to face with two fishermen who are hanging out in a dark alley. They seem surprised to see you, and one of them makes wild gestures while yelling something. However, even if you could understand his language, that would be hampered by the tremendous volume of water that pours out of his mouth as he yells. <laughs> The other one makes even more emphatic gestures and yells another few quarts at you. Oh, hello, ducks. Oh, I can help you, ducks. You're at work, but I can help you. Yeah, the plan is simple. Need 4,000 feet of plastic wrap and an assortment of multicolor markers. Okay. Okay. I mean, I've got, I've got multicolor markers because I have kids. But I'm going to reason with them intelligently. Uh, and we're going to see what happened. As Wilf said, I guess this is housewog. Look, guys, let's discuss this rationally. I'm... Oh, uh, oh, wait here for a second. You leave the alley to find a water fountain and fill up as much as you can before returning. <laughs> The fishmen seem impressed by your fluid capacity and allow you to pass unharmed. <laughs> oh, delightful. Okay. Wow. Uh, the mailbox is made out of foreign stone, which means it's not a federal crime to steal from it. <laughs> Alright, Mad Ducks. We're going to wrap, make a giant frame and wrap the store in plastic wrap, and then we'll draw a diorama of Godzilla eating the store, and then I can call the boss and say, may I be excused from work? The store is being eaten from Godzilla, and I can go home. Cool. I like it. And my kids love Godzilla. So, it's not male crime, it's not a federal crime, because it's made out of foreign stone. Well, let's steal it then. Oh, it's just junk mail. Oh. On it. Now, these frat guys are super into geology. An entire frat house cards from one huge block of stone. Really nice craftsmanship it must have taken forever. And I am a psychogeologist! <laughs> Zip Winchester is sad. 
because he upholds the dignity of the male. Not only did they sculpt the stone bar, they did even stone bottles and cups. That's dedication. Look for that guy's jacket. You find it draped over one of the bar stools. It was tricky to spot because of being exactly the same color and shape as the stool itself. <laughs> Jacket with a big Phi Upsilon Tau patch on the back. You're not sure whether this counts as a painting or a sculpture? <laughs> Let's ask it. The artwork talks to you for about an hour without clarifying the question of its identity. You ask where it gets its energy and it shows you. Energizing powder. A natural energizing compound. Nature speaks in mysterious ways, but not before it has had its coffee. Solid stone couch looks uncomfortable, but it's still in your top five frat house catch, uh, couches. I should check under the cushions. It's a real struggle to lift them, but you've got 130 meat in the couch cushions. Uh, Grimo says this house and the folks who live in it must be crazy. No, they're stone cold mad, Grimos. Well, your, your plan for getting out of work early was an emergency trip to the dentist. I think the difficulty is that you have to follow up on it. There's nothing on the hat rock. Hat rock. Not a hat rack, it's a hat rock. Going up the stone steps. The members of this frat don't care about comfort or privacy as much as they care about sticking to a theme. Oh my god. A bowl of stone fruit, you know, like peaches and plums. It's hard to say what this is. Is it a fridge or an armoire? It doesn't open, it's solid stone. Where do they keep their food and or clothes? And or their food clothes. If you, if Mad Ducks, if you wrap the store and make it airtight while customers are inside, it becomes a crime scene. Either way, get to go home early. Wow, this is incredible. Not only did the fraternity chisel a whole frat house out of stone and carve furniture to match, they even went so far as to sculpt a bunch of frat boy statues. Presumably, they store them up here and haul them downstairs to fill out space for parties. There's also come some kind of weird stone thing. It looks like one of them newfangled televisions. <clears throat> newfangled talkie boxes you've read about, except triangular. Somebody's science project, maybe. The statue has a nervous expression. Maybe it represents the sculptor's academic stress. That's not what I said. Some kind of weird hovering rock. Pretty fancy. This statue is doing some kind of crazy dance. They definitely bring this one downstairs for parties. This statue is holding up its hands in a desperate warding gesture. It must be symbolic of the students' fears of leaving school and having to join the workforce. I don't think they invited a Medusa, guys. Because uh, the Medusa only does it to people, not, not objects. And Ducks makes a good point. If... if uh, why would they? Why would customers go inside if the store is being eaten by Godzilla? This statue is covering its eyes with a hand. Some kind of political commentary? This statue is praying. How traditional. This statue looks like they're yelling something. They must take this one to football games. Wait, wait, wait. There's a stone hat on the floor here. I'll pick it up. Ugh, stone frat cap. Plus four physical armor. There's no way this thing's blowing off your head. The statue fell apart. Well, I guess I better check out this not-at-all-evil stone television thing. This is a television the project program isn't interesting, but you can't see any way to change the channel. Okay, can't do that. Can't do that. Boing, 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 I'm sure this will come up later. We're not there yet, but... Everything in the situation is bad. It sure is, Ducks. Amateur cultists, and they tried a ritual, but they got stoned like regular frat guys. <laughs> Good job, Bully Snake. You walk past a phone booth, and there's clearly something not right with the phone booth. I mean, the booth is fine, but there's some kind of wriggling, twitching, shadowy mass inside it, like a horrible multi arm monstrosity start grabbling to get free. While you're standing there watching, one of the arms manages to grab the door handle, and the shadow spills into the sidewalk, splitting into five creepy human-shaped shadows. What is it? Some kind of shadow fraternity prank? <laughs> Listen to the music. That's delightful. Hey, guess what? We are going to turn Molly Buttons loose with her machine gun. Shadow homunculus. 
Oh, it deals a lot of spooky damage. And it causes bleed. Yikes. Oh, wow. They're going to punch all of us. You better get shooting. Okay, <laughs> cast the lock. I cast Thompson. You know, guys, I think these, these dudes might beat my ass. But we're going to try. Have sleaze damage. They have spooky armor. So I can't spook them. Hmm. That's clean water. That's okay. What can I do here? That's okay also. These guys cannot take more than five physical damage at a time, so it's good I'm not doing physical damage to them. Let's see. Cure bleeding, stench armor, bandages, stench armor. Well, we're going to do some more sleaze damage, I think. This is... Okay, just, just flinging cheese everywhere seems to be working. Or it seems to be working. And guys, I'll be 100% honest with you. I'm, I like Beretta, so... How much have you got left? Three, nine, seven, nine, eight. Cheese wizardry, wizardry is... Presto Swisso! Alright. Now, he's coming after me, he's coming after me, he's coming after me, he's going after Molly. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll tong him. Listen to that scream. I should have had the shadow ring on. Good lord. The, oh no, I'm going down. Oh, good lord. Does that end the fight? No, it does not. Alright, Molly, get after him. Um, nope, that fight's over. Okay, I need to put that Shadow Monstrosity ring back on. You lost. The weird little homunculi stuff you in the phone booth and tip it over on the door running away. Losing that fight made you mad. Alright, here, let's, let's fix this. Where is that? No, this is the ring that is not going to do it. That's pretty good, too, but we're going to put on the... That, Banishes wandering creatures that I can't take more than five. Oh wow, those are both good. Uh, let's see. Random public service announcement. If you're at a gas station and the pump starts playing commercials, press the second button on the right. It's the mute button. If I'm in the work van, I will actually print a tiny label that says mute and put it next to the button. Does that go with another button that says I did that? <laughs> or another sticker? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes, uh, Wilf, they do. You're stand. Here's the thing. You're standing there. They had a screen there for you to like do all your stuff, and they were like, "Well, we need to monetize this because we don't have souls anymore." Bottle cap ring or shadow banishing? Those are real, like those are both really good. I think I'm going to actually leave the bottle cap. I'm going to use the bottle cap ring for now because that would have helped. He was cold, so here's his jacket. Give him his jacket. Oh, wow, thanks. That's much b -b 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 better. No problem. Are you sure you're OBKB? Uh, the pot contains doesn't. It's a shrubberman. Thanks again for the plant poop. I'll leaf. I... Hello, Von Zivkador. Um, yes, in, Ni in New Jersey, you have to have your gas pumped for you. And then I think it was that way in either Oregon or Washington State. I can't remember which one, but it's not universal in that state anymore. Uh, 
Oh wow, ducks! That is that is a theory. This plan is really hot. I'm not saying that it's wrong. Hey, how's your barbecue? He's probably concentrating on his queuing. Leave it to it. All right. Let's see here. Uh. Side quests. Okay, we got Floyd at Fish and Chips wants barbecue sauce. Do we have barbecue sauce? I think I might. Be a quest item, I think. Boy, this was a good. This was, no, I don't, because I have an empty sauce cup in front of me. So let's see. sauce the grill well oh you happen to come across a group of tough looking goblins wearing backwards ball caps slouching insolently and watching for nerds to harass given this is SIT you figure they'd be so for choice but they settle on you hey you who are there being a nerd <laughs> me a nerd yes a book reader weakling you look like this is nerd actions not tough jocklin which is us I agree Let's see here. That's baloney. I'm not a nerd. Oh, prove it then. By we wrestle arms. If you win, then not a nerd you are, okay? And if I lose, then we are to swirl your head in toilet. I don't want that. Nobody does. Well, I will win at the arm wrestling. You and the Jocelyn face off elbows on the table. After a few minutes of clenched teeth straining, the two of you manage to remember the rules to arm wrestling and start the match. <laughs> The Jocelyn is a tough cookie, but you eventually beat him. So there. Okay, fair is a fairness. We admit that a nerd is not you. And they paid me. Wow, there's a lot of chat stuff happening right now. Okay. And I can't talk to him and I can't talk to the other one. There's nothing on the table here. Get out of that. I should open this. Oh, roll of duct tape. Physical armor, cool. Pocket battery, AP to pants, and SIT barometer necklace. Cool. Why did I not open that earlier? That's silly. Mm. This the barbecue fork is technically a base upgrade, but at the moment I don't have anything to upgrade it to surpass the palm. has a work goblet and he has a co-worker with a coffee flag. Okay. It's a Thulu cup at your previous work but you need to play tricks out of the skulls of their enemies anymore. Well, you're not wrong but Butter knife is physical damage. That's the problem. That's spoopy damage. That's Mr. Kell. That's spoopy damage. I have two of these. Make any weapon into a gun, which we use Moxie to turn it down. Okay, we don't need that. Mysticality plus three physical damage and reduce their effects. Pretty good too. But it's physical damage, and that seems to me to be the most resisted. 
physical damage again. Stench damage. And that was physical damage. I'm gonna stick with the high damage. Work. Flagons and goblets sound excellent. Shame we're required to use little food cups at work. Well, I mean, didn't you have a, didn't you have a, you know, a flag or a goblet with like a lid you put down on it? Would that be a faux pas? Let's go talk to Rufus. You wander into an empty classroom and find a blackboard covered with complex physics equations, and I will make them more interesting. Using your boundless charisma and the fact that your finger's on the pulse of modern youth, you rewrite the material to be edgier and more exhilarating. Those kids are going to learn so much your sunglasses fly off. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Hey, Rufus. Still figuring out the pearl. Check back. What do I do with the extra fishman eggs? I can cook them for you. A pinch of lye and some muriatic acid, and they're totally edible. I don't want to know how you know that. He whips the eggs together with some chemicals and fries them over a Bunsen burner. Have you ever been to an ocean at low tide? Imagine frying that smell. Oh, 5 HP regen per round. Wow. That's pretty good. I make potions. Make fancy potions. Stinking salts. Triple distilled lipids. Nuclear tincture. Anabolic agonist. Plasmatic elixir, self-boiling solution. That's concerning. Um, double ice. Double ice, cool. Non-Newtonian lotion. <laughs> and a vibrating solution. Okay. That's pretty cool. Uh, let's see. A big pile composed of 80% garbage and 20% miscellaneous electrical parts. I got a chunk of lead, I got 11 in 1 oil, and I got a piece of scrap metal. Search for something useful. I got a pocket battery, and I got a gold-plated cable. Oh, just sell it. It was chewed on by a rat. Hello, Digi. Glad you are here. It's a plate of arcane hot plates. I think I already got one of those. Dangerous machine. Rufus's normal furniture has been more like in the small area. He's collecting steam. Okay, we needed to get into the laundry room. Oh, that's not... Whoops, that was the wrong door. Well, okay. Let's see what we can do here. Um, oh, no, he's doing the punchy bit. Thank you, Hidden Mosquito. Oh, big damage, big damage, big damage. Oh, that's in my head. Yuck. What's that one do? Ignite random opponents for five on fire. All right. Zim Zam Ricotta. Do it again. Alucard Gorg Gorgonzola. Having sold and handled lye and muriatic acid, do not mess with that stuff. It's a good way to end up with less skin than you started with. Yes, Night Owl. That, you know, it, 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 it makes me think of the meth cooking missions, missions in Payday 2. Here, get tonged! I got pieces of scrap metal. That's cool. I won't go to that door again right now. I'm gonna go out this door. Somebody has tapped the steam pipe to power this radio. Interesting. It has a combination on it. This. Order stuff pepper style. Steel tankard with a coffee lid. Yep, steam-powered radio. Steam-powered. This would dry your clothes way faster than boiling them. Wow. It's a steam-powered washing machine. Launder their meat. You don't want to look at the gross, filthy meat again, so you throw the whole thing in the machine and start the cycle. Wait. You wait. The machine continues to launder the meat. Keep waiting. You continue waiting. Keep waiting. You continue waiting. You're beginning to run short on patience. Keep waiting. You continue waiting. You watch the meat spin around for a while, but it makes you dizzy. Keep waiting. You continue waiting. It's extremely boring. Uh... Oh, the fancy pants Yeti mugs? 
so Mad Ducks, funny story, true story about those fancy pants Yeti mugs. The Yeti had the guy that designed them, and then they fired him. And the story is that they fired him, but he had filed the patent under his name, not theirs. So when he went to uh, Walmart with the design and made, I don't know, Frontier Ridge or something like that, it's pretty much the same thing, except it costs way the heck less than a Yeti does. So if you feel like braving Walmart, and yes, I will take your advice and wait harder. You continue waiting. You don't know how much longer you can take this. You continue waiting. It's quite boring. You watch the meat spin and it makes you dizzy. You continue waiting. You twiddle your thumbs for a while. You continue waiting. You're beginning to run short. Of... Okay, fine. We'll skip. You take advantage of the fact that you can pass an arbitrary rate during one of those dialogues and skip to the end of the whole laundry process. <laughs> Excellent. I waited really, really hard. Barbecue wing maintenance access. Oh! The terminal must be broken. I'll hotwire it and go through. Look at this. What is this? Someone has leaned a book against the front wall. Short stories of long winters. It's a book of short stories which involves someone freezing to death in the frigid web. Grants an upgradable skill. I choose not to be cold. Gives hot armor. Ooh. That's nice. A massive steam-powered freezer full of jumbo shrimp and military, military intelligence. Am I right? I see what you did there. I see what you did. Yeah, yeah you got that contradiction thing going. A frigid ice cream scoop does your mysticality plus four cold damage. Makes it easy to serve ice cream without melting it, but harder to stop serving ice cream without losing a bunch of skin. Wait a minute. You know what that means I could do? Not only is it a new mech word game, but a new hired skill. Hired steel game. That's cool. So what that means... Uh, weapons. This, this right here is doing three damage plus one on fire. This does mysticality. This does four mysticality plus cold damage, but that also means that I could add a piece, I could sharpen it for bonus damage, and then add a piece of lead, a chunk of lead, so it deals more damage, and a razor blade, so it does bleed damage, and then, where is it? There was something that would make it also um, deal on fire damage. What was it? And I'm totally going to do all of this because I do hot damage with one of my abilities, but I don't do any cold damage. So, truly, yes. I, I don't remember the exact particulars about the uh, mech where if it's an expansion or a different game. Yes, I want to attach weight to it. You attach to the lead weight, making your frigid to your frigid ice cream coop, scoop, making it heftier. We're going to attach the razor blade. A razor blade you can... The SIT's Humanity's Wildest Dream of Razor Blade you can throw away. Yeah, let's put the razor blade on there. You fix it to your hefty frigid ice cream scoop, by which the transitive property of disposability becomes disposable itself. And then, where was the sharpening stone? Adds a bonus damage. Where, where was the adds heat damage? Because if I can make it, if I can make it, it deals cold damage and makes you bleed and sets you on fire, then it would be a creme brulee scoop. And I like that. I'll have to look for it. Oh, it's standalone. Cool, cool. Is it, I mean, it's, it's like Mech Warrior 5, right? Like, Hop in and hop in and drive. The hex rock mines. Who's been sleeping here? A warm but not particularly luxurious place to sleep. Okay, it's circled around, right? Did that. Oh, it was the blowtorch. That's right. It's on the weapon, and I can't really pull it back. No, no. That's okay. What does this say? Access to the hex rock quarry is a prohibited except for, except for you know, a very good reason. I have a very good reason. Oh, it's barred from the other side. I'm a psychogeologist, man. I have a very good reason. Mech Warrior 4 mercenaries and Mech Warrior 5. Okay, fair enough. You'd 
figure there'd be barbecue in the barbecue wing. The door is painted shut from this side. Wow. Okay. Well, that's something. An SI2 student wearing SIT student wearing a bulky overcoat flags you down. You find yourself in need of a fuse this day? Well, I, I have one. I guess two would be better. He opens his coat to reveal it several. Do you walk around with those all the time? Yeah, all tech men carry fuses. He plucks one and hands it to you. Thank you. All tech men carry fuses, huh? Cool. Let's see. What was in the gift shop? I don't remember what was in the gift shop. What had... Uh... Oh yeah, the kitchen britches. That's right. A lot of mugs. Most you've ever seen in one place. Okay. Drink more soda! Yeah, see? Gotta drink more soda! I'm in the barbecue wing. Cool. Finest snouts. You've never been less interested in the contents of a vending machine. Yes, Night Clerk. The $7 Yeti... Yeti Bottle Knockoff does a supreme job keeping sustained caffeine bubble water cool. Yes, it's fantastic. A corn tankard, you're modified. It. Seriously, dude, get the get the knockoff. Um, get the the Yeti knockoffs because it's the same thing. It just doesn't have the brand name on it. Uh, limited. Okay. Was there anything? Oh, she's. Professor is snoring in the midst of the most comprehensive food coma you've ever witnessed. You don't even see the plates. Huh. Okay. <sighs> Poopy. Alright, I'm gonna have to read that now. Do you have any fuses that look like fuses but aren't because they are confuses? to remove one with a pair of insulated needle nose pliers because the glass separated from the metal base. That sounds fun! Okay. Uh, let's see. Side quest. That's gotta go back to fission chips. That's right. That's what I needed to do. Go to fission chips. Let's go. <clears> hmm. <throat> oh. Check the coin return, which is a very old-fashioned sentence. Hey, Greasy Steve. You glance around to make sure nobody's watching and slide the sack of freshly laundered meat across the table. He opens and glance. Hey, nice job, kid. Here's your payment. He picks up his briefcase, empties the sack into it, and then slides the briefcase back. Wait, what? Picks up his briefcase, empties the sack into it. Okay, okay. Seriously, he shrugs and go back seven times. <laughs> They'll call you if we need you again. All right. Hey. Hey, Floyd. I'm looking for barbecue sauce for you, my man. Hey, ducks. There's a grid on the wall that explains what are and are not sandwiches. Okay. Night Owl, you've never taken more than 70 volts of AC across... That's terrifying. Please don't do that. Advanced projectile physics. That's still very expensive. I don't really need that. Well, I'm not going... No, I'm not going to buy new textbooks, man. You're hooking me up. Uh, let's see. What you got, my man? Hey, Ovid. Quality merchandise. What? What's up with the beds? Okay, finder sleepers. That's right, I remember that joke now. Um, let's see. Chemical hand warmer. Add plus one cold armor to a pair of pants. That's nice. I have duct tape. Sports drink. Okay. Jocelyn pom-pom. A mob pistol. 
Titanium staple remover. Removes titanium staples. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't even know what I, I could sell right now, so I'm not going to mess with it. I do need to just straight up go to the, the boardwalk. So, we'll go to Ocean City. And then we'll go to the boardwalk. I will open the meat briefcase as soon as I get there. Oh, well, okay. We're shooting cans to get experience. Thank you, Molly. That's very nice. All right. Open the meat briefcase. 500 meat. Cool. I got 500 meat. All right. Let me look at my hats. Yes, I can put on the balaclava. I've got three that I could put on here. So let's go see the dude. Hey, welcome back, baby. Let me see the hat you're wearing. Is that a greasy paper hat? Perfect. I love it. Here's your meat, baby. Spend it in good health. Come back soon, all right? Uh, bala balaclava. Hey, welcome back, baby. Let me see the hat you're wearing. What is it? A balaclava? Perfect. I love it. Here's your meat, baby. Spend it in good health. Come back soon, okay? And then... Stone frat cap. Hey, welcome back, baby. Let me see the hat you're wearing. What is that? A stone frat cap? I love it. Perfect. I love it. Here's your meat, baby. Spending good health. Come back soon. Oh, wow. Okay, there's a lot of discussion with, with solder going on in chat right now. And I have learned I don't mess with solder unless I absolutely have to. Boy, he's still grumpy, man. What do you... You have cotton candy. One, two, three, four, five. There. Now I have cotton candy. Cool. Bus stop. The campus. And then we go back to fish and chips. With a not exactly audible hiss, several of the strange bar-shaped shadows you saw at the fridge factory slide into view from nowhere. They arrange themselves in a circle and orbit around a central point, which opens like an eye, revealing a diamond-shaped black prism of shadow. Are there any geometry professors around? They would want to see this. Okay. Well, all right. Uh, yeah. Um, I need for you, Molly, to do some DACA. Yeah, that's some pretty good DACA there. Hey! No! That, you're sapping my AP! You're killing my business strategy! Man, Hidden Mosquito is awesome. What have you guys got? What are you, six of seven? Alright, we'll do... Actually, if I do this, that'll wipe them out. Zim Zam Provolone! And then if I do it again... Hocus Camber Tocus! And then... I'm going to take my <clears throat> disposable, hefty, frigid ice cream scoop for 19 cold damage and 2 bleeding. And you know what I'm going to say to the shadow prism? Chill. Alright, you won. Take your non-Euclidean bullcrap elsewhere, bozos. And Busquito got stronger. Oh, oh wow. Wow. You can have tin solder as a treat. Wow, there's a solder discussion going on in chat. That's this. I didn't know this was that kind of st stream. Oh wait, wait. No, he wasn't here. Who, who needed the cotton candy? Who needed the cotton candy? Now, I can't remember who needed the cotton candy. Let's look at the to-do list. Give me the side quests. Oh, Zeta Omega. Okay, all right. Zeta Omega Omicron. Yep. Okay. Sorry. My bad. Your progress from wherever you started to wherever you're going is interrupted when three robots appear to move and block your path. Beep boop. Human intercepted. Beep boop. Human. Can a conversation initiate? We require information. What, what do you want to know? Beep boop. Query. Why do we exist? Oh, easy one. Beep boop, sarcasm detected. Why are you asking me? I didn't build you. Why not ask the students that ask you? 
beep boop reply when we approach they sound loud and run opposite speed fast I guess for the baking soda volcano I made in eighth grade start asking me existential questions I'd be a nerd too your purpose is calculation evaluation obvious human intelligence low hey you asked me if you're so smart how didn't you calculate your own existence beep boop evaluation fine prediction robot perform action probability and then go do it go away I did out swoggle him. You have asthma and you've been soldering since you were 12. Well, bud, ducks. Hey, Glordo, I got your treat. I got super soldier syrup. Don't mention it unless you decide you want more later, in which case mention it. it increases the damage of my ranger. Little vial of stamp of the serial num number and complicated sounding, scary sounding chemical names. Increase the damage of my ranged weapon attack by five. Well, that almost doesn't seem to happen. Okay. Um, right. I think I did everything there. You know, let's just go to the courtyard and see what happens. I found a just card a gym bag. Oh, this has the powerful grit. Got it. Because they were lifting rocks. And some of their strength rubbed off. Zero man! That's what you rated on a scale of 1 to 10, man. Oh, bat wings. Got it. Yeah, these look like sculptures I've seen on college campuses. Um, hey, buddy. Um, the infinite hallway. Oh, they haven't finished painting it. Okay, gotcha. Uh, let's see here. I need barbecue sauce. Where am I going to find barbecue sauce? Did I forget something at the bridge? Hmm. Oh! Uh, a bunch of complicated math scribbled with a uh, circle drawn around says do not erase. Feeling waggish and rebellious, you erase just the circle. Unfortunately, it turns out the circle was keeping the math on the chalkboard and it flies out to attack you. So I have to solve the equations immediately. Thinking quickly, you rearrange, reduce, and resolve the equations down to a single zero, which winks out of existence. Calculator! <laughs> I know it said ugh, but that still makes me happy. Oh, wait a minute. I could cast a line off of here. Let's get that cursed fishing rod in the water. Let's get fishing! What do I get? I got glowing ooze. What are you doing? No, yeah, that's an ingredient. Keep fishing. I, right, German? You would think that the barbecue wing would have sauce. But they don't have any sauce. Shadow milkshake. Increase your mysticality by one, your maximum AP by two. That's pretty good. Fish in a sack. I've caught everything. A glowing pistol whipped lamprey. Yuck. Seriously, yuck. It's a nasty mud hole. No, I'm not going back in that again. I already sent him a long way. Barbecue wings with a dry rub. No, no, I've had that before. It, it's fine. Uh, as long as it's a good dry rope, I should say. There's some of them that it's not a good dry rope. That's a problem. Oh, great. This again. Alright, spread the damage out. Let's see what we can do here. Oh, no, they're hitting Mosquito. I don't like that. I don't like it. That's not cool. Ocus Munster Ocus. Splatterum. Dry rub has to pull double duty for flavor. Yeah, that's true. More splatterings. Um, mm, let's set some of them on fire. Be cleansed in flame! Hail Zorg! Uh, I don't think 
I'm going Well, I've got the... Okay. Alright, let's see here. He's gonna go after Molly. He's gonna go after me. Molly. Molly. Mosquito. Well, I'm going to take out one of these guys that's going to square up on Bosquito. Yeah, you're down, man. You're down. But yeah, 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 whatever. Spooky damage, fire damage. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, you're going to take Molly out. I got it. Okay, I got it. Uh, see, Bosquito's still up, dude. What are you going to do? Nothing. Oh, oh, he let out. Whoops. Uh, let's see. Let's use a gauze pad. No longer bleeding. Also, my face is now weird. Let's get some splatter out there. Uh, oh, I used an item, so I can't use another item. Let me see. You're going to drop. You are on fire for three, so you're not going to drop. You can't take... Not. Can't do what it was planning to do. Can't do what it was planning to do. He's going to come at me. And he was going to come at me. So if I knock him off, these guys won't know what to do. And he's going to he's gonna burn out. No, he's not. He doesn't have that. Shrug. Okay, cool. I like shrugs. Burn in Zorg fire. Oh, yeah. You're right, Poopy. <laughs> Dry rub. Alica for Fort. Alright, and now I'm gonna win this fight. What killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age! You won! Nobody messes with telephone booths on your watch. Alexander Graham Bell would be proud. I am switching rings. I am so switching rings. We're gonna get that sucker going. Most locked door I've ever encountered. Uh, no. Don't need that. They've been steamed to illegibility. Drinking fountains out of order. Liberal arts. Wait, 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 I'm glad you guys got out. No, no point. You got the book you were looking for. Um, right. Wait. Junius. No. Technology. Junius Fitzroy Technology. There, that's going to come into play somewhere, and I don't know how. Not yet. Uh, is Doc cooking again? Uh, if he is, it will not be at the top of the coming hour. It'll be at the top of the next hour. I... Hmm. Okay. For the time being, I'm going to go on over to uh, the Big Moist and see what we can find, because there may be some stuff I need to bring back. Chapter 4, Svont. You wouldn't trust this rickety old shelter to protect you from a single raindrop. It's a notice board. What is there to notice? There's a poster from the local tourist bureau advertising something called Mud Hinge. Apparently it's the biggest hinge in the country. What else is on there? Missing. Tom Chapman. Require at length at Largemouth Bath and Sons. Face of a teenage boy encircled and attached to a photograph. Portrait of the boy and his elder male relatives, each holding Largemouth Bath proportional to his height. There's a similar post poster right beneath it. Kathy Tracy. Inquire at Longmouth. Missing Kathy Tracy. What's going on at Largemouth Bath and Sons? Make a missing poster for Charles. You don't have a pen. Um... 
and, and Charles Wallace to both posters. Oh, Night Clerk, it's the shoes I have on. They're bouncy rubber shoes. Alright, let's hoof it over there. Here, here, look. Here. My rubber boots, they make me bounce. But what, here's what I'll do. I mean, rubber boots are good for the swamp, but so are floaty vampire boots, so I don't actually step in anything. Large mouth bath and sun. You were interrupted by an unfortunately familiar face. There you are, dearie. How nice to see you again. Although you should have wished for a more festive setting. I'm afraid I can't wait for the winter snow. Not you again. It's me again, Dark Noel! At your service. You'd be doing me a service leaving me alone. Don't be a Grinch. I have presents for you. What's a Grinch? Got illegal rum? I mean, I could have. I do have stuff I need to take back to the bar. Did you say presents? Yes! Painful retribution and yuletide curses! It was very clever of you, hiding in the Institute, all warm and cozy behind the Dean's wards where I couldn't get at you. But now that you're near the source of our power, it's time for me to deck your halls if you get my meeting. I am just looking for mine. I do not know what you're talking about. I don't know anything about the Dean, or your plans, or weird dreams, or any of it. Curate lays a finger inside of her no a side of her nose, and her eyes start to grow, glow red and green. Okay. I guess we're gonna have to fight. Well, shadow hexagons. Okay. Let's get some dock out there. I don't know what's gonna happen, but we'll get some dock out there. Hmm. She's gonna absorb power from them. Which means, I want to prevent... No, she's, she's fixated on Crimbo is the problem. Which is the loathing equivalent of Christmas. I'm going to start by setting people on fire first. Fire in the cheese hole! Burn. Hail's a work. Alright, now we're going to get we're going to get some cheese out there so it's good and melty. Yeah, we're going to do it again. I think those are going to go away. Yeah, one hit point in the fire. Oh, he's not on fire. Why aren't you on fire, man? That's not cool. Well, how many hit points do you have? You're at 47. I'm going to smack this so you can't absorb anything from it. He's going to drop from being on fire. There we go. She's on fire. She did cold damage because she likes Crimbo. Okay. Oh, did she absorb the on fire? She did absorb the on fire. Uh, nine physical damage from Drew's... Yeah, yeah, do that, Molly. It's the same damage, but it has a debuff with it, so smack him. Hidden Bosquito swoops in. Deals eight. Nice. Let's see. Oh. Oh, look at this. She has 11 mysticality. We're going to do 11 hot damage. Let's cook it up. Oh, yeah! Look at that! And now I have enough to knock her out. Freeze! This is far too unjolly for my taste. Yeah, I know it is. You won! She scuttles away with it. You haven't seen the last of me! Or some other cliche. Take your pick. Large mouth bass and son. Hmm. Okay. State your business. Largemouth Bass. Boy, do I know that song. If I didn't love these baths, I'd have quit years ago. Largemouth Bass and Sons cursed late. Stranger sales are down. Children going missing. The bosses have stopped speaking to one another. So from one uh, pescophile to another, take my advice. Don't stay here long. What goes on here? At Largemouth Bass and Sons, we fish Largemouth Bass. And most of us are sons. Why aren't the bosses talking to each other? Well, between you, me, and 3,600 largemouth bass, Mr. Ch Mr. Chapman and Tracy haven't been on speaking terms since Mr. Chapman was snubbed at the Aquatomy Awards a few years back. They tolerate each other only because they both perform a function vital to the business. And that is... 
Mr. Tracy debones the fish and Mr. Chapman rebones them. Only then are the fish ready for sale on the market. Are you saying they take out the fish's bones and put them back in? It's tradition. For generations, Chapman has deboned the bass and Tracy rebones them. It's a unique process that gives our bass that distinct tang. What happened to the kids? If you ask me, well, that's what I did. I ran off. It's life for everybody. And Tom and Kathy, they never had the makings of largemouth bass boner or reboner. identifies the waters as a site of historical importance. This pool is the birthplace of the largest mouth Luke, a bass presented at the signing of the Declaration of Dependence. August 2nd, 1792. Returned to his home waters to die. Alright, 8292. Guess what? We're going back to Ocean City to look. Yeah, yeah, tired German, reboning pants, you're not wrong. Yeah, 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 right here. August 2. Uh, no, died. Largest mouth loop, best fish. That's a heck of a eulogy. Okay, I just, alright. Is, is there anything in these spaces here? Like, seriously. <clears throat> Elderly man with thick eyeglasses shuffles up to you with a determined expression. Before you can react, he shoves some meat in your mouth and shouts in your ear, Operator! Operator! Get my worthless son on the line! I am not a payphone. I don't the last payphone said, and I'm not buying it. Get talk Let me talk to my first learner son! Nah, 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 nah. I'm sorry, sir. The line is busy. Please call again later. I'm probably gabbing with one of his floozy girlfriends. I guess that's a way to get paid. I go to the bus stop. They hope they reinsert more bones than the fish had. Then they, they remove more bones than they reinsert. Man, I don't. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know. Man, I just. Let's go to Mudhenge and get ambushed. Get an eye full of those two big palookas over there. Eh? points out two burly men dressed in leathers and furs bearing the body of a dead gator man. Considering the swampy ground, they're less bearing it and more covering it in mud. They look up in surprise as Molly saunters over nonchalantly. What's the dope, Bruno? Y'all fitting a lizard with a Chicago overcoat? Uh-oh. Nah, doll, it ain't nothing like that. Ain't it? My peepers ain't... Oh, oh. Come look at this. You take a closer look at the body of the gator man before he disappears into the mud. He's dressed in some kind of uniform with an official-looking cap and epilepsy in a canvas bag. These two mugs have gone and blipped the mailman! That caper will bring G-Man down on you on it like a ton of bricks. No, look, we didn't. Ah, tell it to Sweeney, but don't flap your wig, sugar. We ain't pigeons, we won't rat on you. We won't, we won't rat your boys out to the flatties. I appreciate it, miss. We've got something of a trading post set up for leather goods and like, if that tickles your fancy. The Leather Brothers. Leather store. Gator skin handbag is always the Ritz. It's going to be clan invasion from the clan's point of view. I'm going to have to go buy a whole lot of Axe body spray to get in character for it. What's a Gator Man? Have you not seen one yet? It's hard to keep track. These are the guys Jess commissioned. They're pretty much what you'd expect from the name Gator Man. They're intelligent, upright walking alligators. They have tough, scaly, tough scaly skin, lots of teeth, and pissy attitudes about everything they aren't already eating. They especially hate intruders, and the second biggest reason that this swamp isn't a popular tourist destination, the first being that it's a swamp. Did you want to check out? Yes, we'll check out the trading post. The Leathers Brothers trading post. Look at him over there doing the stabby. Nothing to see here. Hunter's Beans, a veritable hill of them. A sack of genuine leather. What's in it? It's empty. It's only made of genuine leather. It does not contain genuine leather. The ambiguity is clear now, and the person responsible for the original description has been sacked. Awesome. Careful on him, or he might tan your hide. Awesome. 
some, something to say about the dead gator? Swear we didn't know he was a mailman. Never intentionally hurt a mailman. I never accused you of killing a mailman. Ah, uh, me and my big mouth. He was in my way, understand? Had no idea he was a mailman. Never would have touched a mailman if I'd known it. And my brother, he had nothing to do with it. I swear it. What's wrong with killing a mailman? Listen to yourself. Can't tell if you ain't a hunter, all right? Most any species is fair game for hunting, but mailmen are protected by international treaty. Last hunter I know who hunted a mailman got pulled up by the International Criminal Court and mailed to Mars. Uh, I never heard of the International Criminal Court. No reason you should have. So far, its own uh, jurisdiction only extends to the hunting of mailmen. So the International Criminal Court is jurisdiction is about people attacking mailmen. That's okay. That's just something new to add to the mythos at this point. Who are you? I'm a hunter. Name of John Leathers. And if you can't tell from the accent, I'm from Albion. As a toddler, I hunted small game like mosquitoes and gnats and then moved to foxes and voles as I grew up. I like the game over here, but I got my eye on the greatest hunt of all. Oh, I have to pick the haunted option because it's there. Humans... Big picture. I'd like to build a ladder to heaven so I can hunt the dinosaurs. That's more of a five to ten year plan, though. I didn't think that's how ladders or heaven works, but it's good to have a dream. Wouldn't it be more practical to build a time machine? Now that sounds ridiculous. Oh, never been asked so many questions before. You can talk the talk, all right, but what about hunting the hunt? I got work that needs doing, and I ain't going to get going out there while they're searching the swamp for the sod that killed their mailman. They find me, I'm dead. You don't have to be a leatherman to know which way the wind blows. So what are you asking me to do? Working on something important. A project. For that, I need five gator hides. Even though a police, you might find them. Scope it out myself. Couldn't be easier unless it was a smaller number of gator hides. The Gatorman Village. Okay. What's the project? Not so fast. Need to know if I can trust you first. Oh, okay. Uh, he observes me with monk-like serenity. Looks like uh, you set up quite the trading post here. John shakes his head. Paul can't speak. Can't or won't? Don't. Um, can we trade? Cool. Alright, let's read about this. Crowbar. For prying things open. I got a suspicion I'm going to need that. Pickaxe. I remember that from last game. We might need that. Gators, Gator man skin pants. Okay. Impenetrable tack. Powerful grits. Condensed swamp gas. Okay. Gator punch. I'm just gonna go with this. It's, uh, books. Books, books, books. I'm gonna read this book. A collection of short stories about the men who defile wisdom and warnings to go hike. It only costs 30 experience. Maybe there's a lesson. I'll find the lesson. succumbs to sub-zero conditions and perishes. At the end, the narrator opines that if it were them, they would not have gone somewhere that is cold. They would have gone somewhere warm and thrived. There's hundreds of these stories. They're all like this. So I have hot armor. Okay, look, I know, because I've got 200 experience, so I'm going to buy me some skill. Hmm... Hmm. It is a great background music track. You're right, Silicone. I love it. I love a good banjo soundtrack. Not Deliverance, but, you know. Let's see. So I got 219. So if I go, that could be 180 if I get good eyesight, stony heart, and lapidary empathy. Or I can pick mine over Munster, increase this, and then pick up these two, which I think I'm going to do. Buy that skill. Yes. Buy stony heart. Yes. And then buy good eyesight. Yes. All right. There we go. Uh, what's in the house? Wouldn't go in there if I were you. Why not? You might not like what you see. Well, now I, I have to. 
Egg is busted. Oh. Told you it weren't a pretty sight. I was looking forward to eating that egg all day, and come dinner time, I only went and dropped it. I'm sorry for your loss. I bet. Okay. I'm gonna go to Mudhenge. A burly hunter trudging through the mud gives a holler. As he nears you see, he's toting a shotgun under one side, one arm. And a pile of gator hides over the other. What are you doing? Swamp's no place for a little boy. Gators eat you alive. Take this. Get yourself a seat on the next bus out. Um, that's not enough money for the bus? Take it and go. I'm not a little boy. You're expecting the drawing from the numeric work. Why would I do that? Well, I'm not doing that. A very clean booth for such a money hinge. A gross muddy flower. Someone's going to lose their job at the fence factory. Okay, here. Welcome to Mudhenge. What is Mudhenge? Friends, it's Mudhenge. What's that? One of the most popular hinges. Folks travel all over to see the mysterious mud. I've heard of Stonehenge. I don't see the comparison. You don't? Look, we could talk for hours about Stonehenge. Stonehenge is big. Stonehenge is strong. I've gone all over this. So with respect, I'm more interested in talking about Mudhenge which is a formidable monument in its own right and so much more than a first draft of Stonehenge, as they say in magazines. What's so special? During the swamp solstice, it's said that the needle of the compass uh, placed upon the central alt altar will point not to the west, but the secret west where lies the thing you need the most. Special enough for you? When is the swamp solstice? You're in a swamp pretty much always swamp solstice. What is Secret West? I'm no mystician, but Secret West is the direction in which lies the thing your heart is most missing. And it's said that a compass laying on the altar will point to Secret West. That's the object of the Mudhenge Challenge. But we don't run the challenge anymore. Too hard, too many presumed dead. The thing your heart is most... That's kind of up to you. Up to your heart, that is. Could be a secret crush, new job, maybe a piece of bread. I guess you could say my my heart is missing Charles right now. Is he your secret crush? Maybe you're my secret crush. Sir, I'm married. I'm looking for someone. Charles Wallace. About my height. Similar build. Another missing person? Another? I don't mean to upset you. Mudhenge can be difficult. Some folks have a habit of walking into Mudhenge and never coming out. That's why we can't promote the Mudhenge challenge anymore. That, that doesn't sound like a challenge. That sounds like... like it's a real risk of going going missing makes it such a popular destination. They they want to go missing? Sure. They get their thrills in different ways, but we gotta get them. Me, I like making earrings out of live scorpions. Have you seen Charles? Couldn't tell you. Folks don't leave a name. You don't have a guess book? Used to, and then one night it wandered into Munhenge and never came back. I'd like to visit it. Why wouldn't you? It's the best and most mysterious hands just side of the border, and mission is to me. Wait, which border? I believe all of them. I mean, I could do it for free. Think I hop in the fence? There's one thing you haven't counted on. You won't have the informational brochure that comes with your ticket. Alright, fine. Give me the brochure. Alright. A simple brochure comp complimentary with your mission to Mud Hinge. Cool. Thank you. Alright, let's let's look at this. Read it. Little known is no little is known about the history of Mudhenge. Oh my god. Alright, here, we'll squeeze through. Oh my god. Oh my dear sweet god. Oh! Oh! Oh, it it it, it does the teleports! Right? If I go in there, I come out here. Oh, oh, this, this, this is a thing. Why, why are you throwing me out here? Wait, ooh, oh. An arcane message in a strange script. Drowned Mary's crown is buried past the huge tower. different. No, it's different. There was Hobo Code. What's that over east? 
Dang it, which way is east? Oh, hi, it's a Gatorman. A crazed Gatorman appears out of nowhere and is champing at the bit to make sure you're nowhere five minutes from now. I better clean this clock. It wasn't specced by Spinal Tap. You are 100% correct. Stonehenge. Well, we're going to do some hot damage because he's got a mysticality of 10. Yep, yeah, and then if we do this, we'll just beat him. That's fine. Hello, pistol. Working and lurking. Gator Man rallies for another round, but a hand rises from the swamp and drags him down screaming. And Mosquito is stronger. What's in this? The backpack stashed in the swamp is a certain to contain illicit material. Parental guidance is advised. It's a complete change of clothes in the sack and a black embossed card sticking out of the back pants pocket. Drought Mary's crown is buried past the Hugh Tower. Frey so nice, you've read it twice. New Discree! Nothing is worn, everything is visible. You elect to leave everything in the bag you found it. Nothing is your size. Okay. So is it that you can't leave... Oh, here we go. Hobo code. The sunken box car. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. Uh, I wonder if I can leave. What if I travel by map? I'll travel by map. How's that sound? In a clearing, a band of Cub Scouts sing fight songs around a fire. The scout leader waves you down. I don't know which way is which in this damn swamp, he whispers and shows you his compass. I can't find the North Star. Been leading these boys in circles for days. If they figure it out, they, it won't be most marshmallows they're roasting tomorrow. I'll teach them how to read a compass. You remind him that North and West are effectively switched at the turn of the century, and now he ought to be looking for the West Star. He claps you on the shoulder. Got it. I'd like to see them disrespect me now, and he turns and walks face first into a beehive. That all, uh, that checks out. Yep, that checks out. Oh, hey, Molly. Yeah, that's, uh, don't know what happened. Looks very dangerous. Yeah, we'll go look anyway. Look at that. This would fail railroad safety inspection for at least two reasons. Poetry books are all full of slant rhymes. Everything has fallen off the table. Hey, what's up, dude? A diagonal hobo. Although it looks normal from your although from your perspective, it looks normal. Oh, hi, sorry. I didn't know anyone would be living here. I suppose I should stop being surprised by that. That's all right. I'm Hepridge Dolphin, and welcome to my humble, humble abode. Well, I'm Hal's Diggington. Nice boxcar you got here, apart from it being steep. You know, I've grown so accustomed, I hardly notice anymore. Apart from when I try to pay mar play marbles. Your game must be going downhill. <laughs> Your accent is different than most hobos I've met. Well, my family's from old money, see? Old enough, it all turned to dust. All that remains is a rambling old manor house I can't afford to maintain. I decided it would be a splendid opportunity to expand my horizons. The horizon is typically a bit more level. Why are you living in a boxcar in the swamp? Well, to be honest, it's difficult to part with the old estate. This is as far as I've been able to get without homesickness overwhelming. I wonder, could you spare time to help me? I could be done with the place if I had a proper souvenir, specifically my father's collection of antique padlocks. And you can't get them because of the memories? Ah, uh, I've forgotten where the keys are. <sighs> yes, I'll help you. There are 11 locks all together, but they won't be all together, will they? No, afraid not. I'll mark the location of the house. Is this a sponge? Oh, I should tell you about the house. Here it comes. There aren't any ghosts haunting the property. There aren't any? Yep, not a one. My family never suffered violent or tra traumatic deaths. That's something you had to warn me about? Not really. I just thought you might like to know. Well, I do like to know. I'll be back with your 11 padlocks. Because... I don't know, man. I can't... Flashlight cuts through the trees. The glare passes, and then you see it poking its head above the canopy. A telescope! You fancied a telescope since you were a boy. You'd press your nose to the window of the telescope shop for hours until the proprietor would run out and threaten you to tan your glutes with a tripod. I 
I think you're thinking of somebody else. That never happened to you? Funny, it's a universal experience. There's a telescope in the trees if you want it. Fine, I'll go to the treehouse. I'll go, yes, that you're rather insistent. A bald cypress is so tough, no surprise if it has chosen to make the tree home. Hello? Mister, why don't you keep walking, huh? This is Will Hunter's treehouse, and the rules taint the grown ups allowed. Who are you? Will Hunter, I said. What, what's your story, Will? Taint much tell. I ain't like all that interesting, mister, I swear. Not like you city folks. I'm not city folk. You ever seen a pig bird? Yup. Bet you ain't seen half as many as me. How many have you seen, Will? I reckon about 70. What's up there? Oh, ain't nothing. Swear it. You don't want to see anyways. We we'll use the telescope you got there. Afraid that's property of Will Hunter, same as my licorice collection. Licorice? No licorice. It wouldn't be called licorice because it taint made of rice. It's called licorice because you lick it. And I ain't, I'm saving mine up so I can lick them all at once. Yes, Jake, this is fun. How long have you been saving your licorice? Reckon been a few months. It's okay to wait a few months on licorice as long as it's refrigerated good and proper. You refrigerated it? It's in my pocket with some ice, so I reckon... What are you doing in the swamp, man? Nothing special. Same thing every boy gets up to, I reckon. I gotta know what that is. I ain't telling. Can you let me up there? Ain't no adult ever been up here, and I ain't fixing to break out for nothing. I'll just climb the tree. Enough. You clasp your robust limbs around the trunk of the wet shedding cypress and begin shimming. This is a private tree house. Stop or I'll tan you high until you can't stand up. There's no boy up here. Only large sagging features of a human face sunk into a tree trunk. This can't be Will Hunter. I reckon taint to keep you from seeing my plight. I've been wicked, mister. What, what happened to you? Taint much to tell. That cannot possibly be true. The tree sighs, shedding scraps of bark to drift to the floor. You ever heard of a doctor? You know what that is? Yes, I know what a doctor is. Heck, what'd you want to be so mean for? I reckon most people gonna, you're going to ask, they couldn't tell you first thing about what a doctor does. I only met one doctor, Dr. Weiss. Lived in the same street as my step on. T'was one morning he paid me six bits to paint his fence. And heck, I swear I was fixing to do it, mister. But I heard there's an interesting trout down by the river. A little wider than average, but not very wide. Just the way Will Hunter likes. Can a boy resist? Are you asking me? No, I'm telling you. Will Hunter couldn't resist a gander at a trout. And any boy who says he could is lying. Anyway, Doc Wise wasn't real pleased. And teach me a lesson. He cursed me to be a tree. Was this a witch doctor? Don't ask Will Hunter how long I know doctor. They got all kinds of powerful tools. Tweezers, hot chart, could have used anything. This is this is going to be a witch doctor, isn't it? What's the lesson you're supposed to learn? I ought to paint fences if I says I'm fixing to. Yeah, I guess so. Can you end the curse? Well, the doctor told me I'd be a tree so I can make good by painting a bunch of fences all around town. Hard enough for me to do it like this, I tell you. I'll do it for you. Mister, you paint fences? You wouldn't want to do that. Yeah, yeah, I will. The wind picks up and snaps off a few weak twigs, but Will doesn't seem to mind. That's real swell. Thanks a lot, mister. Doc, who cursed me, had a nice white picket fence. And he said something like, Will Hunter got to paint three more fences or he'll be a tree forever. Paint three fences. Got it. And you can get my paints and brush out of my knapsack. I just had... I, I just hand them to you, but I'm a tree. Is there a ladder you can put down? I can, but taint the ladder the way you and I know it, though. But part of the tree, I can sort of wiggle around. I were still a boy, I reckon you say like my fingers or nostril. Fingers or nostrils? He extends his long, arborescent fingers and or nostrils down through a hole in the treehouse to the swamp. You should be able to climb down those nostrils now. I'll see you, Will. It's a huck knapsack for a favored brand of rascals and imps. <laughs> Paint and brush. Take care of those, will you? And long handle brush belong to a grandfather. Your grandfather? Don't think so. Alright. Okay. What what is this? A boy loses his enthusiasm for hoarding rocks in a treehouse. This is called the death of innocence. Wow. 
All right, let's peek through. You see nothing out of the ordinary. Rivers run around the trunks of trees. Crawdads and craw moms make love upon the rocks. And a duck is impaled upon the beak of a heron? Okay. Can I, can I turn it around? Nope, doesn't look like it. Ugh. Let's go to the house. Okay, I'm betting that's one of the locks right there. This door's padlocked. The car was left to rot. It yeah, hasn't rotten enough for you to open the door. Oh, I have a wire coat hanger. Cool. You unlock the car, destroying the hanger in the process. You search the car. It's going to except for the glove box, which turns out to be a key box. The key is not like the key to this car. If you have a sense of humor like mine, you'll agree that's a real shame. Yeah. Okay. Tarnished key. Recovered padlock. Pop the lock off and it unlights the creek. The most powerful tool is a padlock. It's the more opposite of a tool because it obstructs rather than facilitates the work. The cinder blocks are waterlocked. That's not good. They're standing way too close to the others. You explain personal boundaries and perform a quick procedure to make it less creepy. And I got more sordid grease. Okay. Old Dauphin never got sick of tires. The workbench covered with tools rusted past the point of usefulness, even as bludgeons. What is this? Old campsite that looks trashed. You find a shiny 7 8 inch combination wrench with CW on. Combination combination wrench? This belongs to Charles, but he doesn't seem like the kind of guy who'd lose one of his tools carelessly, nor the kind of guy who'd leave his trash around. You look more carefully and discover weird tracks. Big clawed bipedal tracks. Maybe Gatorman tracks? The spot where a scuffle happened. Charles Wallace got kidnapped by Gatorman. He dropped the wrench to attract your attention. Hopefully you find him soon. What is this? Why is there a hole? It has a hole. It's slightly larger than your hand. Honestly, for what is essentially a horror game, we've had too, too few opportunities for you to stick your hand in a suspicious dark hole. Guess I have to do it. You reach inside the dark hole. It's damp, ominous, and then, ah! You find a key. And the scream wasn't justified. It's a mossy key. Oh, I can't open that. All right. It was unrelated. His love of padlocks was unrelated to basic home security. All right. Mopey Dolphin. Hortense Dolphin. Calpurnia Dolphin. Dolphin. Beasley Dolphin. Fansworth Dolphin. Which one were you? Beasley or Fansworth? Okay. The couch faces the wall. It must have been the Dauphin's family's punishment couch. Alright, well, I guess that could be a thing. Padlocks, yeah. The basement of this house is predictably completely flooded. You need a breathing apparatus to go down there. The door is padlocked. I have a key! Store bought radio, fancy serving cart. Just the right size for a severed head or a roast of some kind. You reach, grip the handle, take a deep breath, lift the lid, and peek underneath, and it's it's empty. Well, okay. Enough China to defeat an army if you could get past the padlock. And if you were in command of the world's hoity toityest military. No padlock's on the dinner table. That's a rule and an observation. Okay, let's go in the door. Oh, the mossy key. Some old fridges got locked into and accidentally asphyxiated. That's still all fridges. That's why it's a padlock. Recovered padlock, expired food, and expired hide-and-seekers. Okay, you find a key frozen in a block of ice. Uh, I got a can of nothing, almost nothing escaped the moisture. Can of fruit cocktail. Oven is full of gross, steamy swamp worms. Yuck. Uh, we'll rifle through the drawers. So that's a dire corn holder. A corn holder is a tiny vampire that drinks corn cob juice instead of blood. A dire one also drinks blood. <laughs> Alright. Oh, I got another recovered padlock. Paperclip. Junk mail. Hey, uh, what about the sink?
Uh oh. Hey man, thanks for the bits. Thanks for the bits, Eatern. Um, Shadow Pickle. It's the sex number of bits. Fish in a sack. And. Fish in a sack. Can I. I need a heat source to thaw that. I need a heat source to thaw that out, I think. Nothing under here. Yeah, it's empty. Okay, can't go down there. I need a breathing apparatus. Can't open that. So I guess we go in here. Alright. One toilet at a time, just like the rest of us. It doesn't work. Maybe something's wrong in the tank. I found a wet padlock key. It's stuck in the float valve hinge flange. The cabinet is securely locked. Maybe it's full of deadly poisons. It's full of steaming blood. Oh, no, it's just coming through the stained glass rose, rose uh, hanging in the bathroom window. That doesn't explain why the water is hot, though. Drop in the key. And now I have the Dolphin Padlock Key Cold. A nice warm bath causes the ice to relax and it drops the key with a grateful sigh. <laughs> oh, water break. Water break. Pistol redeem water break. Mm. There we go. Hmm. Okay, cold key unlocks this. Padlock. Mercury eye drops. Product is safe and effective and don't let ever let anyone tell you different. And Burtworth's finest tooth wax. It's a whole ball of prescription strength tooth wax. Well, okay. I have a wet key now. I'll unlock this with the wet key. Uh... Some dirt in a planter, presumably where I plant. Okay. The toy box is disappointingly empty. Not even a BB gun or a creepy doll. Maybe the doll is hiding somewhere. Wardrobes were very important in old houses that didn't have built-in closets to keep skeletons in. Okay, fair. Work pants and a wire coat hanger. You relieve the furniture of its contents, none of which are skeletal, unless you count the coat hanger. Alright, cool. Full of books about sports. The titles are too boring for me to even tell you what they are. Nothing's hiding under the bed but dust. Comfortable looking bed free of blood stains or vaguely person shaped lumps under the blanket. The shiny padlock key. The nightstand has an empty drawer and a locked drawer. An eerie ghostly sound. This place is not supposed to be haunted. Door is padlocked. Okay. Door is padlocked. Let's go in here. Nightstand. I got a battery, I got a match, and I got a... The nightstand's contents are disappointingly non-fancy, so I have a disappointing key. The bed looks inviting, but no one has accepted the invitation for a long time. The vanity. I got radium rouge. The convenient thing about products with radium is they're easy to find in the darkness of the coffin they'll put you in. That seems about right. The cedar chest is locked and easily big enough to hide a skeleton or a whole body. Okay. Alright, now we'll go in here. It's the attic! Strewn with gizmos and bits of gizmos. Looks like a miniature radio car from Driftwood. A radio small enough to carry. Amazing. If you listen to it periodically, it'll warn you about nearby monsters or actual manifestations of your repressed traumas or give you baseball scores. Better build a better radio and the world will beat a path to your door. A better one than this one, I mean. Okay. Boxes and none of them say padlocks. They were superstitious enough not to store padlocks on the east side of the attic. That's how you get family curses. Okay. Wait. It was just that that thing was just making sound. Why, 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 why is it doing that? You hold the radio. Gee, Pop, where'd you get all the treasure? Is it like cursed pirate hordes stolen from the ruins of an ancient civilization? Nothing like that. Just sound investments in perfectly normal and moral financial markets. Voices are eerie. 
Okay, so there are leftover conversations. Mom, Mom, a terrible ghoul stole the key to my nightstand. Now, dear, don't call your brother Ralphie a terrible ghoul. He probably hid the key in the potted plant in the hallway like he always does. Oh, okay. Well, that, that's handy. Um, um, okay. Alright, the voices are eerie. We got that. It's not in here. It's not in here. It's not in here. Quit doing that. And look inside. The padlock key. The dirty one. So now we go here. And we unlock it. And we got a padlock. And a creepy music box. Deal your moxie. Oh, okay. Uh, no, don't do that. Listen to this. Okay, we're still on that front. No, we did this. Wait, wait, wait. It was in here. Who stole my golden arm? Come on, sis. Don't you know any other ghost stories? It's the only one you ever tell. Okay. For goodness sake, Agus, you're obsessed. Obsessed with taping things to the back of paintings. Just like your aunt, a one-eyed Calpurnia dolphin. You probably die peacefully in your sleep just like she did. To the back of paintings, you say. Well, okay. Maybe like Calpurnia? There's a there yeah, there's a there's padlock key and it's it's sticky. What about here? Nothing, 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 nothing. That's the stairs. Uh can't do that. Where's the other one at? Oh, uh better listen. Uh, please be careful around the kitchen knives, Rebecca. They're very sharp. I keep them this way because, counterintuitive as it may be, dull knives cause more accidents. Yes, Mother, I understand. Okay, look, I'm not... Is this, like... The, the mundanity is becoming weird now because it feels like there should be something else. What, what, what played over here? Remember, Ralphie, you mustn't ever open the door to strangers. Okay, Mom, because it might be a kidnap or a murder. I'm sure that would never happen, but it might be a vacuum cleaner salesman, and we already have one. Alright. Well, I can't open that. Um, no, nothing here. Is there one out in the, the garage I need yet? Wait. What? What? Why? What, what? Clarence, I'm so grateful your family never suffered supernatural curses, serial murder, demonic corruption, or plague. I agree, dear. We've been so fortunate. Okay. Clarence, why are you lying on the floor under your workbench? Are you alright? Were you attacked by a burglar, an axe murderer? Calm down, Agnes. I'm just practicing changing the oil in our car. Yeah, how the mundanity is emphasized, Grimos. You're not wrong. All right, recovered padlock, and I got a handsaw and a rusty key. One tool and one key, which counts as a tool. It's an extremely specific one. Okay. Yeah. All right. You open the cabinet and examine fine bone china. Bone china? Human bone china? No, the brand mark is pretty well known company, so probably not. And I found a hat. A fine china helmet. Cool. Alright, wait. How many? I have nine. I have ten padlocks. Where's the last padlock yet? Is it in here? I don't think it looks like it. No, I'm really trying to fit you. A breathing apparatus. I probably have to go back to the college and get a breathing apparatus. Also, the Wyatt family music doesn't exactly take away from it. Yes, I am sure. 
I am 100% sure that I'm going to need to go back. For man, uh, okay. Need some socks for all them lock. I, you, mm, I mean, I, I'm not going to say no. Thank you, Von Zipador. I was a big fan of Bray Wyatt. Oh, there it is. That's what I was looking for. Ah, uh, what? Wait. What? But where's my... Didn't I just get another key? I... Bus. Campus. Oh, we're doing this again. Yeah, we're doing that again. Yeah, I think it is in the basement. The Fiend was a great debut. The, the empty pot is where I got one of the keys out, uh, Jack. So, uh, The Fiend was a great debut. The whole Candlewood Cove style lead up was great. But, hey, Rufus. I don't want to fight robots. I need to take stuff to the bar. I have 11 messages or two messages? Uh, two frat guys you helped that earlier. One was looking for mesquite chips and one lost his jacket. Oh, heck yeah, bro. If you got problems beating the cold, queuing is a hobby for you, man. Wait, did I say hobby? I meant lifestyle. Standing next to a warm, comforting fire does sound pretty good. Right, bro? Plus, while you're standing there, you can be queuing up like some bergs or weenies or whatevs. It's win-win. You bask in the warm glow of their conversation. Hey, Dan. I found this drum of vermouth. Found some olives. Verm vermouth is one of my favorite mooths. Oh, God. Our martinis have been a little lackluster, I must admit. Okay. Oh, that's, that's good. Hey, Barnaby. Buy you a drink. Those who seek to quench their thirst with coins sometimes get more than they bargained for. Well, you're not wrong. Uh, let's see here. Hey, we got more stuff. These people are obviously on a fourth date. You shouldn't bother them. Wait a minute. Okay, hang on. Messages. Call Don T. There's a message from Rufus. All right, let's call the mob. Don Toblerone speaking. Don, that was unusually concise. Are you feeling okay? The boss is mad about our telephone bill. I've been encouraged to keep this brief. What's the job? Greasy Steve will have details. All right. Rufus. The number you've dialed is not in service. Please hang up and... Rufus! Oh, it's you, Hal. Sorry. I had to tap into the university line to get a phone down here, and that isn't, strictly speaking, legal. I figured out the next step in building my quantum telecommunications device. Can you come by my lab as soon as possible? Well, I have reason to go, but for some reason, I think there ought to be something here. What do you got? Cola Wars stuff. Nope. Damn. Here I was thinking that that would be the way to go. Trench pants. Alright. Mm, bus. Campus. Alright. Rufus. Alright. Coin return. 
Alright. <laughs> Hi, Rufus. What's the next step? Um, do I have to go back in the sewers? Oh, this is more straightforward. Well, your part is. I need someone to broadcast the quantum signal from this Fishman Pearl over as broad an area as possible. I figure the most run robust transmission network is the commercial radio band. The nearest broadcast tower is at the Radio Shack at WGCR in the Big Moist. Okay, what do I do there? Take the transmitter, plug it in, and plug it in their console. I will transmit a special frequency. I need a bunch of different test readings so I can adjust the signal for latency, data loss, and so on. You don't... All you have to do is find as many random radios as you can, tune in WGCR, and use this receiver to test, test transmissions. At least 10 different radios should be enough. Let's call it 11, just in case. Thank you, Rufus. You're giving me more to do. Oh, um... There we go. Alright, we got it. What is a Greasy Steve? Hey, kid. Good to see you. Have a french fry. They have fries here? I didn't see it on the menu. I bring my own from home. I'll, I'll pass. Boss decided to send a message to Congressman Chutney. You familiar? Yeah, messages is information conveyed from one person to another. I met with the congressman. I never met him. His son, Chadley, is a student here. He lives in one of the frat houses. Zeta Omega Omicron. Yeah? So you're going to make young Chad sleep with the fishes. Oh, I didn't sign up. Oh. He gives you a sack of rotting fish. I didn't sign up for this either. Look, all you gotta do is get in the kid's room. It's a lead pipe cinch. I don't know what that means, but alright. Look, I'm gonna go through all of this, and like, there's gonna be random barbecue sauce in his, in his bed or something. I, I that's, it, yeah, I'm gonna go upstairs. Yes, I know there's a party. And it's going to be in the clean room, I'm willing to bet. Yep, chutney. And dump the rotting fish on his bed. After night's inevitable rager, he'll stagger back to his room and pass out without even noticing. The perfect crime. Bada bing, bada boom. Alright. Uh, yeah. Are you going to pay me now? Oh, oh, several, uh, come from nowhere. Hey, look, I've got this anti-shadow ring. Pew! You take a deep breath and focus the energy of life, and being pretty sure that weird black shapes shouldn't be just floating around in the air like that, and then you fire those energies out of your ring and annihilate the shadows. Okay, annihilate literally means reduced to nothing, and those things are already nothing, so maybe it should be something like... Anquidate? Except my Latin stinks, so that's probably not grammatical at all. Besides, you aren't really making them just blast him. Yeah, we just pranked Frat Boy. We sure did. Hey. I, no. Hey, Steve. Bed's full of fish. It was a lead pipe cinch, like you said. I still don't know what that means. Nobody does. It's what makes it a great turn of phrase. Nice job. Now Congressman Chutney will know who he's dealing with. Briefcase of meat. Open it. 600 meat. Nice. I guess we'll try the robot lab. Yeah, for a breathing apparatus. Anyways, I started blasting. Molly, are you okay? You've been five minutes without saying a word. It's a book, Applied Ballistics. Oh. Okay, yes, it's the Applied Ballistics. Uh, yeah, I remember all that. And we did the. Hey, how you doing? We did it! Yep, some real cuspy winitude has been demonstrated. Plans for the break, other than stop and see my dad and grab my stuff, not really, just punting. I've landed myself in an extremely si weird situation. I could use someone smart on my team. Would you be interested in a bizarre and dangerous adventure? It's my vast preference to avoid danger, but otherwise a very tasty sales pitch. Go to the speakeasy, I'll be there. Base of Operations, 10-4 Mission Control. Okay, so there was something else to do there. Mm. 600 meat, not 6,000. Did I misspeak? I misspoke. 
Okay, yes, we're messing with equations. In this cursed place. I wanna rock. I want to rock. You wander into an empty classroom. I'll mesmerize them. Alright, there we go. concentrating on his cumin. Uh, plant and stein. They don't want to talk to me. Where am I? Alright, we'll go to the, uh, we'll go to the big moist. Amusing, because people hate the word moist. We'll go to Radio Shack. Gatorman screaming wildly to your left. Ah! Another Gatorman starts screaming to your right. Ah! Another Gatorman. Another Gatorman. You're surrounded. I could stand still and hope they leave, but I don't think they will. We'll just go for it. Okay. Gatormeyer Chief. Gatormeyer Chef. Okay. Okay. He wants to do 20 stench damage to Mosquito. That doesn't work. Oh, okay. So I need to switch up to stench damage here. Well, get the dock up. Oh, shielded! Oh my gosh. Okay. That's a good hit. We are going to put this on Mosquito. Um, now, we're going to set you on fire. We set most of them on fire. Now let's do some splatter batter. Uh, yep, yep, we're going to keep it going now. We're going to keep it going now. And we're going to take out the healing one. Yeah, we're going to take him out. Whack. There you go. You're down. Alright, you're on fire. Nope, he's shielded. Ha ha. He's going to smack me. Oh my lord! Okay. Um, wow. They, okay, I need stench armor. Like, super bad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's not that's not great. They're filthy. What does that mean? Okay, they're filthy, so they do the stench damage. I'm contemplative. You lost. Maybe don't let them sneak up on you. Take a moment to consider your failure. Okay. Oh, did he really? not have been paying enough attention. Crystal heart. That's sleaze armor, not stench armor. There we go. Oh, that's even better. Uh, Gatorman campsites. I found a Charles other wrench. Bricks in there. Got shadow line. Okay, cool. What is this? Bricks must have been inexpertly mortared together. Those bricks were to cover up the fact the last brick is missing in the layman's conspiracy ever. A red f Oh, no! A red fern. Something really depressing happened here. Oh, my God! Oh, no! Oh, no! No! Not the red fern! Oh, my God! Oh, that's... Oh! Knife to the heart. It's a book called Where the Red Fern Grows. And it seems like some of you have not read it. And it's a coming-of-age story for a kid that lives up in the Ozarks in the... Uh, I don't know... Early 1900s. 
maybe the 19 teens and it'll make you cry because it's this heartwarming tale up to the end man I can't follow that well it is a book that kids read uh, German. It is a book that kid 1920s, yeah. It is a book that kids in America read. I read it in 6th grade. Whole bunch of 6th graders. You ever hear open sobbing in a 6th grade classroom? Yeah, now you would have. It, it's, it is, there's a lot of good stuff to it. It is a good book. It tells really good stories, and then at the end, It's like Old Yeller, except more so somehow. Man, okay, I can't... Man, they put a Red Fern reference in. Man! I'm gonna call it here. Uh, it's... I, I, I mean, we're supposed... It is better than Old Yeller, but... it that, That's why I think it's fair to say it's Old Yeller, but more so. Okay, uh, the top of the hour is is when the next stream's supposed to start. And I I can't even find. No, oh, man, the red. Oh. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna cap it there. Um, after all of that, I here here's the piece of advice. Yeah, I has a sad. Listen, it's Friday. We're going into the weekend um, here and. Given the given the subject matter we just came across, and and everybody's on the point of tears here, um, if you're in the United States or Canada and you feel like your mental health's not doing well, if you're afraid of what you might do to yourself, and I say this because I have been there. Okay, I've been there, and I know what it feels like when it seems like the world has lost all color. It is of late as if I have forsaken all of my mirth. Like, I know that feeling. And I got to a point where I was afraid of what I would have done to myself. So what I want you guys to do, I want you to have a good weekend. If you got to work this weekend, I hope it's a good weekend even if you're working. And here's what I want you to do. If you are concerned about what you might do to yourself, then in here in the U.S. or Canada, you can call or text 988 National Mental Health Crisis Line. You are worth it it gets better okay and this stream would not be what it is without you so all of that you guys take care be safe out there tune in for other people here on WBPL 76 thank you for choosing this for your entertainment and we will see you next time